Daniel, when you were a young man, you had a near-death experience. How did that come about? Well, first off, I'd like to tell you a little story which leads into that. And I must say that my whole life I have been on a search. I mean by that that I was really going through a crisis. What is the meaning of life as it applies to myself? And on top of that, I got myself into a depression, as a result of which I became very lethargic and I didn't want to do anything. I lay in bed for days on end, from morning till evening, until the point arrived that I got bed sores, which then led to blood poisoning. And on top of that, a deadly tissue infection developed during an operation. While I was in that condition, I was sort of hovering between life and death. I guess you might say I was in a sort of delirium. And then I had the opportunity to go through this near-death experience. So tell me, what was that like for you? I awoke in a very dark place, and this place was, well, it felt like emptiness. It was emotionless. It was, well, I suppose there was some life to it. Did this place have any walls? Well, I didn't think it was open in that sense. It was closed as far as I was concerned. I couldn't move in any direction. I was just imprisoned, imprisoned in this darkness, this gloom, absolutely. But there was life there. I mean to say I did meet people, and people in quotes is what I mean to say, because this place for me was a kind of in-between world, between life and death. It's as if you don't know what direction it's going in. I was able to converse with these beings. Maybe it would be better to say these people. And it was very interesting for me, the conversations. Were you able to see these people? Did you perceive anything? Did you see faces? It was more of an outline, not really faces as such. I didn't recognize any faces, but I was aware of their essential being. I mean the feeling of being in the presence of a soul. And did you speak with them? We talked about things I was interested in, but which also interested the people there. And I was simply captivated by the conversation because we were on the same wavelength, the same level. It was just interesting. You mean you had the same interests? Yes, exactly. And at first, I hadn't realized that it wasn't actually a good thing that I was in that place. There was no way forward or back. You felt you were somewhat trapped there. But I couldn't really focus on that because I was riveted by the beings there. Do you understand? You mean in the sense of the subjects discussed? Yes in terms of the subjects discussed. So then someone suddenly put their hand on my shoulder from behind. I was a bit shocked at that. Then I looked back and I saw a luminous being in this darkness. But I couldn't really tell exactly what it was. 
In hindsight, I'd say it was maybe my guardian angel, an angel that grabbed me and said, follow me, come with me. And really, for me, there was no question in my mind. End of discussion. I followed this angel. And I was, well, a little bit unsure at first, because I didn't want to follow just anybody, but I was fascinated by this light, this radiance. So it was clear for me that I would follow this angel. So then I felt this darkness. It became brighter. There was this brightness that approached me. It felt sort of like a warmness. I felt secure. And this feeling of security convinced me that I was on the right path because previously I wasn't sure if the dark place was the right place for me. A place where I wasn't feeling anything. But in the presence of this angel, I was really feeling something. I felt safe, secure, and a warmth. I talked with the angel. I was asking questions, was asking this angel questions. Why should I follow you? For what reason? And the angel said, and I remember this clearly, you yourself do not want to stay in that darkness. You want to enter the warmth. You can come with me. But if you continue to follow me into the light, which I was starting to become more and more aware of, and which was getting closer, I wanted to know. Yes, the angel spoke to me and said, if you follow me into the light, there will be no turning back. I was a bit shocked at that. How's this? I can't go back? You have a decision to make, the angel said to me. You can decide. If you follow, then you will have freedom, love and safety. But if you decide against it, and this angel was completely accepting of that, you will have to return to your body. And for me, that was really so fascinating because I had a choice. And in that moment, I remember it so clearly because I felt as awake as I am right now in reality and talking to you. That's why I have this clear recollection. So I really had to think it over really think. Do I want to go back? The question had always been, what's the point of this life? What am I supposed to do there? It was this question about meaning. Again, this depression. I had really to think hard. So I said to myself, sure, go for it. Follow and you'll be free. And your heart will find its peace at last. You'll enter the other side, into the light, but then I had to mull things over again and was thinking right then of my loved ones, of my parents. And right then, the decision was made. Right then and there, and I woke up again. It went very quickly. It couldn't have been more than a few seconds. I could feel the body again, but the awakening, the wake-up phase, that took a while. What effect did the near-death experience have? Before I had had this experience, I was searching, going through crises, as I have told you, that all vanished. 
at first I felt so secure inside that all came later, of course, after I had left hospital and gone back home. I felt a kind of ease and contentment within myself. At first, that is, I was someone reborn, but I should say that these doubts did surface again from time to time. Despite what had happened, a serious crisis came up later on, due to my having thought things through, my whole life story, the recurring doubts, and so on. Were you right to do that, and such? But this need to search, and this was the beautiful thing for me, that all came to an end. I knew I had found what I was searching for. Would you say, then, that you had gotten over your depression? Yes, yes, exactly. You are right. This near-death experience, did it have a strong effect on how you live your life or how you see the world? At my core, I am, and basically always was, fundamentally a believer, but would really stress that I'm not religious in that sense. Prior to that, I was, more or less, I mean to say that the childlike trust in God came back, and it's a sort of trust that I never experienced so intensely before, with the exception of when I was a child, toward my parents, naturally. But that all vanished when I became an adult and had the crisis. The trust came back and was what freed me from depression. Now, of course, about the task. You were asking about my worldview. That all opened up for me. I'm free now, meaning from dogmas. My worldview, my horizon, has really opened up, and I feel like that was a slice of freedom for me. Daniel, thank you so very much, and many thanks to you.